the critical word hidden behind the word game is the word play. Um, if, if you're not willing to let somebody play, um, which means to explore, to, in, in, to experiment, to fail, to try on identity, if you're not willing to let someone do all that, you're not really interested in letting them play, play with that content area and they, therefore you're not, really not interested in giving them a game about that area. What we learned is that even with just simple pencil and paper drawings and with us uh, doing our kind of best at sort of acting out the different roles, kids would get really engaged. And that in fact, if you do the right kind of paper prototyping, you'll have a sense of how engaging uh, the pro challenges are with people. You don't need the 3D art. Um, in fact, if you do need the 3D art to engage people, you probably haven't found the right idea. The idea ought to be compelling at the paper, pencil and paper stage. The best information you can get is by simply watching the player play the game. Um, watching, the, watching all their moves, seeing whether they remain sort of leaning forward, focused, um, if their mind begins to wander, if they seem bored, uh, make note of that. Um, they may not be able to tell you why. Uh, it's less important that you ask those kinds of questions of them, that, that you just observe their behavior and continue to trust your judgment as a designer in assessing what you're seeing. If you're just sort of doing statistical analysis of what people say to you, um, you're not, not really capable of making decisions. You can't design from statistics. You have to design from the heart um, and from the gut. And so as we designed the game, we really were trying to, to think hard, not about math and logic. That was easy. But thinking about play as an experience, that was where we put all of our effort. Um, and so we thought, how do we design it? How do, how do we avoid the trap of many games where if you can't solve a problem, you're stuck. Because we not, neither of us liked that kind of game, what we called a brick wall. We simply don't like brick walls in games. And so through it, we came up with a whole format to the game whereby if you weren't doing well, you were, your progress might be slowed down a little bit, but you would keep moving through the world. Um, later on, you'd have to go back and bring more characters through the world again. And so if you were struggling with one puzzle, you could move through it. Um, and, let, and gradually, more slowly, but eventually, master it. Um, we also thought, well, the people playing this are going to be all different ages. And so we came up with a model in which if you play at a certain uh, level of competence, the game stays the way it is. But if you get really good at it, the game gets harder. And so one person might complete the game playing only at the, the beginner level, but they could still complete the game. Uh, the next person might gradually graduate up to the, the harder and harder levels always make failure entertaining. In fact, failure should be more entertaining than success. Success is its own reward. If you succeed at solving a puzzle, you feel good. You barely need any confirmation from the game. Just a simple ding will be satisfying. But if you're struggling, if the game sort of is in on the joke with you and laughs about it and gives you a funny animation, it's actually sort of saying, yeah, we want, it's okay to be here. Um, you can have fun while you're here. You'll get there eventually. You'll get to the other end eventually. But while you're here, you can enjoy yourself. You can relax. Um, and that's really something I learned sort of from doing the game, but that's really become an ongoing principle of, of ours in design is to make failure, um, keep failure interesting. One thing I've learned to trust is in the moments when I'm feeling most gloomy about the game, it's frequently just before the breakthrough. And so you've really got to sort of um, persist through the hard parts um, for the reward, which is exactly what happens in games. And if that sounds kind of recursive, that's really my point. Games for learning are not tricks that get you to engage with something that you don't want to engage with. Games for learning are the learning experience, and they should have, and learning should feel like a game feels like. I ask m myself, um, what is the conceptual understanding that's critical? Because um, I think it's, it's that kind of conceptual understanding that early um, scaffolding, the modeling, um, the, the preparation for future learning is really where the game, I think, hits its sweet spot. If I'm asking myself, how can I make this fun, I'm asking the wrong question. If I'm asking myself, um, where is the fun in this, I'm asking the right question.